In typical SCOTUS fashion, this term saw a wide variety of cases. There was something for everyone. The court heard cases ranging from voting rights to COVID restrictions on the free exercise of religion and much more. In NCAA v. Austin, Division I college athletes challenged on antitrust grounds the NCAA's restriction on student-athlete compensation that limited the education-related benefits and compensation that could be paid to the athletes. The NCAA argued that their rules were proper because they played a unique and critical role in ensuring amateurism in college sports, which is something the market wanted. They further argued that both they and their member schools were not commercial enterprises such that the normal federal antitrust laws did not apply to them. The student athletes, on the other hand, argued that of course they were subject to the federal antitrust laws and that these rules violated the Sherman Act because they depressed the fair market compensation that the student athletes were able to get for their labor. In a unanimous opinion, the Supreme Court held that the restriction did violate federal antitrust law. The majority opinion was fairly narrow. Justice Gorsuch really stuck to the district court's findings, and he also limited the court's ruling to the specific NCAA rule before the court. As a result of this ruling, the NCAA changed many of its compensation restrictions, and student athletes are now permitted to seek endorsement deals and sell merchandise with their name, image, and likeness. Mr. Sanchez and his wife came to the United States unlawfully in the 1990s and later obtained temporary protected status when the United States designated El Salvador as eligible for the program following devastating earthquakes in the country. Mr. Sanchez's employer sponsored Mr. Sanchez for a visa, but then when Mr. Sanchez applied for lawful permanent resident status, he was denied. At issue in the case was the Immigration and Nationality Act. That act allows the United States to designate certain countries as eligible for the Temporary Protected Status Program. Under that program, citizens from the country designated as eligible for the program may live and work in the United States when there are unusually bad or difficult circumstances in the country, and they can stay in the United States as long as those conditions remain. The INA also allows for an adjustment of status in which certain non-citizens who meet eligibility requirements may become lawful permanent residents. Mr. Sanchez admitted he had not been inspected and admitted uh, when he came to the country unlawfully. His argument is that by being granted the status of non-immigrant by the INA, that meant he necessarily also got the status of having been inspected and admitted into the country. The government argued that Sanchez might have the status of non-immigrant, but that status doesn't mean that it also gave him the admission and inspection required to be eligible to become a lawful permanent resident. In a unanimous opinion written by Justice Kagan, the court held that recipients of temporary protected status are not eligible to adjust status or become lawful permanent residents if they have not been inspected and admitted to the United States lawfully. In AFP v. Bonta, Americans for Prosperity Foundation challenged the constitutionality of California's requirement that nonprofits operating in the state provide the information of their largest donors to the state attorney general. AFP argued that this requirement chilled the First Amendment right to associate of both the organization and its donors. The state, in contrast, argued that it had an interest in obtaining this information up front in order to help with its fraud efforts and for administrative convenience as far as getting the information and not tipping off targets of its investigation. In a majority opinion authored by Chief Justice Roberts, the Supreme Court agreed with AFP and held that California's disclosure rule was on its face unconstitutional because it burdened the First Amendment right to associate. The disagreement between the majority and the dissent really focused on the burden required on First Amendment rights. Justice Sotomayor found that there was no burden on First Amendment rights for the petitioners because she thought that they had not met their burden of showing that they or their donors would have 
um, been burdened in their association right or have reason to fear reprisal for the disclosure of their information. This was an interesting term at the Supreme Court, and there are already interesting cases on the docket for next term that I know we'll all be watching.